morning. My name is Jonathan Matheson here. I'm a solicitor chair with Ross and Connell based in Dunfermline. Um, Peter Adams in the advertising material for today was touting me as the baritone barrister. Um, and it, it tells something about my background because I'm into singing. I'm not going to sing today, however, because it's being recorded. I don't want to break Ben's camera. Um, however, there are some similarities between what I do in my day job and my interests because to some extent, the court is a bit of a platform, a bit of a stage for you to express yourself and perform. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Fiona uh, can perhaps uh, uh, sympathise with that view. Um, and it should be perhaps my comfort zone now because after 26 years, it will be this year, uh, since I was, I was fully qualified, that's actually uh, just over half my life, which will be 50 in June. So um, perhaps familiarity breeds content, but as I say, it should be my comfort zone after all this, this time. Um, I was uh, born and brought up in Dundee, that's where I studied and qualified uh, in law and I specialised in court pretty much from, from day one. Um, I moved to Fife in 1991 and since then I've been with various uh, mainly high street firms um, and presently with Ross and Connell in Dunfermline. Um, and what we do there is basically pretty much any type of court work but my main speciality is family law. Um, one of my colleagues fact an accredited family law specialist but there are three uh, court solicitors in our firm and we all have our particular skill and aptitude for family law it's simply become what comes through the door most most of all I'm afraid in this day and age what is family law family law can be of course divorce can be break up of a civil partnership um, involves sometimes preparing separation agreements and of course representing people when it comes to court um, the majority of family law that I deal with is um, disputes concerning the welfare of children, that can be in residence or contact disputes, and as well as having the, the necessary knowledge to present the case in court, as you can imagine with that sort of subject matter, a lot of care and sensitivity has to go into advising clients, sometimes in fact telling clients what they don't particularly want to hear. Um, for instance, you will often get perhaps a mother coming in with a child saying, um, well, my four-year-old doesn't want to see his dad so he doesn't have to. And you have to explain to him, well, a four-year-old is a bit young to make that decision. If a four-year-old said to you that you didn't want to go to school that morning, would you say, well, that's okay, you don't have to go to school? You have a responsibility to guide and encourage your child to maintain and promote a relationship with both parents. And likewise, on the other side of a coin, you'll maybe get a father coming in to, to see you saying, uh, well, I'm not seeing my child, so I'm not paying child support, why should I? Well, I'm afraid you brought this child into the world, whether or not you're seeing the child, you have a responsibility throughout the child's uh, early years to maintain and support them. And as I say, as a family law solicitor, you have to impart the advice, as I say, with um, care and compassion, but also direct them the right way. You're not there just to say what they want you to say, what they want to hear, it's to try and give them professional advice in their interests, and more importantly, the interests of the child. Um, through, through my um, interest in that area, um, I've developed um, a reputation for being a, a solicitor who's often appointed by the sheriffs to do independent welfare reports. So that's where you're sent out by the court to speak to everybody who's involved in a dispute to analyse what's in the best interest of the child and hopefully to make cogent recommendations for, for the future. Um, another area that is becoming increasingly prominent is children's panel hearings. You now get legal aid for them and also advising children themselves. A child of 12 is deemed to be old enough to be consulted. Even a child younger than that can be, depending on their particular uh, age and maturity. Um, other areas of law that we cover include uh, guardianship applications, where someone uh, is unable through mental incapacity, perhaps or a stroke, to look after their affairs. Someone can be appointed through the court uh, to, to deal with their finances and their personal welfare. We do quite a lot of that. Um, we also deal with uh, accident claims, reparation cases. Um, but of course, the area that everybody else asked me about is criminal law. Um, every solicitor who does criminal law is on the duty role. That is a rota of solicitors whereby you're, you're the first port of call for someone who's arrested um, and you can uh, give them advice and assistance for them getting bail at their first um, court appearance. And I've been doing criminal law throughout my career. That's what really inspired me to go into the profession, is this idea of being up there like 
get to Jerry or Perry Mason or whatever. Um, it's not like that, it's not as glamorous as that. But um, sometimes you do have occasional successes. And one of, one of my favorite trials that I did was in Kirkcaldy a few years ago, where I was representing was this, this guy who was just a vagrant. He was, he was a tramp and he was wandering about in a, a scrappy, scrappy yard, just trying to find some bits of metal that he could sell. He was up to no good. But um, there was a fire in the scrap yard and he was accused of setting fire to it. And the prosecution brought a whole procession of youths, there were about four or five youths, who were also in the scrap yard, up to no good. And they were basically implicating him, saying, he set fire, we saw him setting fire to a rag in his cart. It was a complete, um, total lie. And um, fortunately, I was able to, through cross-examination, to convince the sheriff that he wasn't guilty. And in fact, the likelihood is that one of these youths that were up to no good were responsible. And um, you know, you occasionally get a success like that, you think that's, that's real justice, you know, an operation. So um, we don't do a lot of more sort of glamorous, high-end criminal stuff. That's more for the big firms that specialize in that. But we do often deal with, with all variety of criminal cases. And it's, it's a particularly interesting um, area of work that I've, I've always uh, particularly enjoyed. Um, and through that, you develop um, rapport and a reputation for being able to represent clients of all backgrounds because I think I had quite a sheltered life growing up and I've seen all sorts now and it really does make you realize that you've got a duty to represent people of whatever background that they have. We're all, we're all the same, we're all equal. You have to go in no airs and graces and be able to relate to people from all backgrounds and that's a skill just as much as the importance of, of knowing the law. So um, that's my, my background in history. Um, I'm now going to show you some uh, pictures of the, the court, so perhaps Ben could switch off for security.